Howdy, it's Tubal Kane once again, and this time with Machine Shop Tips number 290 entitled The Heinrich Drill Jig. And be sure and watch for the next video as well, which will be called The Heinrich Drill Press Vices. So they have a complete line of, of drill jigs, uh, drill vices, such as this one, and some other metalworking products as well. But several of you, of you have noticed uh, me using these jigs in my videos and wanted more information on them. So let me talk a little bit about these and uh, even drill a hole or two for you. But the Heinrich Company is out of Racine, Wisconsin, and they have a nice website. So go to that if you want to see their complete line. And their motto is, Get a Grip with Heinrich. Now up in Racine, Wisconsin, that used to be the home of Case Tractors, as well as, if you ever get up that way, be sure and look at the Johnson Wax Building that was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright back in the 30s. It's just beautiful and worth the trip in itself. Well, let me talk about these jigs now. I'm getting off of the topic. The purpose of a drill jig, of course, is to uh, allow you to drill cross holes that are perfectly centered and not off to the side. And you know, As you know, that's not really easy to do. Now, near the end of the video, video I'll show you the poor man's tubal cane drill jigs. You've seen this before, but I'll talk a little bit about those too. Because these aren't really very affordable. In fact, and these come in three sizes, both hand-operated and air-operated. And they are quite expensive. This is the smallest one, the number 305, and it weighs 13 pounds. I had one of the bigger ones once, and it, uh, well, they weighed over 20 pounds, but the, the biggest one is seven, seven or eight hundred dollars. So that's not uh, something that you're going to have in your home. But this one has a capacity from one eighth to three quarter inch diameter stock. And these two are the same. They're, they're the same jig, the same model. And I do not have one of them for sale, I'm sorry. The uh, price on this is about $330, and they go on up. So they come with a stop, like this, a work stop. You will have to buy the bushings from an industrial supplier. I don't believe that Heinrich supplies them other than a liner. And uh, they are... Um, I don't think you can buy these directly from the company. You'll find them in J&L and all of the uh, industrial suppliers. So look in McMaster Car or wherever you want to and you're going to see these uh, on various pages. So check that out. These jigs are actually for production. They're not really meant to just drill one hole. So you set them up and you can drill 8 million holes or whatever you need to in a factory but uh, they're designed around the wonderful Heinrich mechanism that allows you to very quickly lock the work. And you see this move up and down and I'll talk a little bit about that in the next video because I have the patent sheets and you can look that up on Google Patents as well. But I thought that was pretty neat. But to look underneath of this you're not going to really be able to tell how it works but there is an adjustment under there as well to give you the tension. I, I've really never had to mess with it. But look at how nicely this is made with the, I believe it's just gray cast iron, but just nicely finished and uh, great detail. A uh, nice crinkle finish on the top and a little gauge here to set that pressure, although I don't really use that. And it'll come with a liner. This is a bushing, a drill bushing. That's, that's the liner, and it comes with an extra one, which is stored down here. If you, that's actually another bushing. This is a liner right here on this one. Now, I've had this mounted on a steel plate for years because, for, for just for general use, you really need to hold this down with T-bolts, and I don't like to do that because I'm only drilling one or two holes, so I always had this mounted on a steel plate so I could C-clamp it onto the uh, drill press table. So that, that's the purpose of that. And sometimes I keep my extra bushings hanging here so I got them in the common sizes. And they have to be the correct size for the liner and the drill size that you're going to uh, 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 drill as well as the length. So there's a lot of factors to consider when you order your drill bushings and you want to order them also with this little uh, 
though I don't even know what you call it here, machined into it. These are hardened. These are very, very hard and will last many years. But some of them are available. Let's see. thought I had one here. Can't find it now that I'm looking at looking for, but not all of them have this little uh, machined area, and you'll see why in just a moment. This drill jig is missing the correct screw, and I'm just using a washer there. But th this is the type of screw or a similar one that should be used, and they're made specifically for these drill jig or these drill bushings. Also, they're hardened, and they're a shoulder bolt of the right diameter both on the head and that shoulder that allows you to change quickly the, uh, the uh, drill bushings. See there's a sleeve in there, or there should be a sleeve. I guess there isn't one here in the poor man one. But that allows you to push it in all the way and then turn it and that locks it so that both it will not spin, you don't want the bushing to spin, and it will prevent it from lifting out when you back up the, the drill bit. So there should be one in place here, and I do not have one in either one of these jigs, so I'm just using a, a flat washer so I can pull that out. If you want to see how these are built and the different parts, take a look at the website and I just printed out this uh, exploded view here which I like to look at but you can see the different parts and that it's also uh, made with the air cylinder here but this uh, parts breakdown covers both the manual and the air operated. But taking this off, you need to loosen this screw. You can see what it looks like underneath and this is called a, a, a liner V adapter. Notice that that fits down into the V slot here. So this is really a V block. And now you can see why the length of the bushing is critical. You can take this off for cleaning. very accurately built. What I do then in order to adjust it is simply put the stock in there and this is aluminum. Tighten it right here. Now the cam should be in the up position for that. You can tighten this. Now move the work in and out, take it out, as many pieces as you want, and just clamp it right here. There, I've got to go in the right direction, don't I? Like that. And the work is secure. And notice that I'm up against the stop, and the stop can be moved in and out on this rod. And they even provide a hole right here to allow you to tighten this up. It seems like they just went the extra mile here with this company with all of the details and the quality. And I am not one of their representatives. I just like I just like this product. I'm over at the drill press now and this is a three-quarter stock locked in place and there's a 532nd drill bit and I'm just arbitrarily choosing that size or drill bushing and, and a drill bit. Now I just like to move this around in the smaller sizes, but in a larger size you really need to clamp this, but I like to float it around, but if you're drilling half a million holes you would take the time to bolt it down. And you can use oil or whatever you, you want. This is just aluminum, so I'm going to do it dry. And this will produce a perfectly accurately located cross hole. I like to back off a little bit and clear those chips. Now how sweet is that?
In my 40 years on the chain gang, I mean in the school shop, the most difficult thing consistently for students to do was to drill a cross hole. I cannot tell you when we made C clamps and vices the, the amount of spoiled work when they drilled the hole crooked and how bad it looked and sometimes it weakened, weakened it so much that tightening it would, would, uh, would break out. So that's why I went to the effort of uh, using these jigs and the expense and then also came up with uh, the Tubal Cane poor man's drill jig. So let me talk a little bit about these cheap jigs. I made these uh, jigs in several different sizes. There's a 3 8 hole and a half and a 5 8 and then the bushings could be removed and years ago at school I had made some of these just out of the soft steel and I didn't even use a bushing just had holes in there but eventually those wallowed out and were inaccurate but still so much more accurate than uh, drilling freehand and uh, the bushings uh, here are replaceable as, as I mentioned the stock is nothing more than inch and a half hot roll because that's what I happen to have and the hole should be drilled farther toward the bottom so that you have room for the bushing and these are about three inches long but you can make them any length that you wanted or whatever stock you got and that hole would be drilled in a four jaw chuck in the lathe so that it's accurate I didn't even use uh, liners here as I mentioned before these were just uh, reamed holes and the bushing held in place by that shoulder bolt. Then there was also a hole here with uh, a thumb screw to hold the work down. Now there are times when the uh, after drilling th th it was hard to get the work out of there because a, a burr was formed on the bottom side. So you would have to tap the work to get it out of there. Then it freed up pretty easily. So those are just some suggestions and if you want you could drill if you don't have bushings or access to them or want the expense of them because I suppose these are six eight or ten dollars a pop for these I don't know it's so long since I bought any but nothing's cheap anymore but you could just drill a, a whole series of holes along here in different sizes for your application at home in your basement shop. But that's what they look like. Now when you drill this hole here for the bushing, it's very important that you locate it with an edge finder or whatever your method is on the milling machine of locating holes before you drill it and ream it. Because if you do not have this in alignment, you of course will uh, produce unlimited numbers of uh, inaccurate holes. Wear your safety glasses in the machine shop at all times. I thought it most apropos to use a Heinrich Weiss for the poor man's drill jig uh, demonstration here. But uh, in the half inch jig here with a quarter inch bushing and a quarter inch drill and a half inch stock, I'll drill the hole and always make sure that you are not going to drill into your vise or if you drill into these rods on a on a Heinrich vise, you, you know, you're, you've really ruined it, so be careful of that. Use good shop practice and think all, while you're working. And these smaller uh, jigs really need to be held in a vise, not, not freehand. You, you need something to grip onto them. I like to float it around, and the uh, hole is chamfered. All the drill jigs are marked also as to size. Need to clear those chips out. Those bushings are extremely hard and will last for tens of thousands of holes. All right, back at the bench, let's take a look at this. Always a little burr on there. Now it'd have to be deburred, but we've got a nicely centered cross hole. All right, 
let's wrap it up here now. That completes this video on the Heinrich cross drill jigs as well as the Tubalcane poor man jigs. Hope you enjoyed the video and be sure and watch the next video. This is Tubalcane saying so long for now.